Airbnb is just not cheap anymore. At its peak, they seemed unstoppable, revolutionizing travel and drastically increasing choice for consumers. But where did it all go wrong? Recently, amidst a flurry of negative headlines, Right, the party's over for Airbnb renters. The company said yesterday that its temporary ban on parties and other large, noisy events is now permanent. Cracks have begun to emerge as customers grow dissatisfied. This is the story of how Airbnb lost its most important asset, customer trust and loyalty. So let's delve into why customers turned their backs on Airbnb. Back in early 2010, Airbnb was a blessing for many travelers who were tired of the cramped hotel rooms and their high costs. Airbnb offered budget-friendly homes with kitchens, living rooms, and multiple bedrooms, giving travelers the homey atmosphere that they craved. Hotels at the time were consistent but lacked personality and space for affordable rates. The few hotels that offered luxury and space often cost a small fortune to book and still didn't provide the true home-away-from-home home experience on vacations. Brian Chesky and Joe Gebbia recognized this gap and came up with an ingenious idea. As design students struggling to pay rent in San Francisco, they started renting out air mattresses on their living room floor to visitors of a local tech conference for $30 a night. To their surprise, their idea of offering affordable, unique accommodations turned out to be a hit as this concept resonated with so many people. Sensing that they were onto something, the duo launched Airbnb in 2008 as a simple room sharing site, however. Early users started demanding more freedom and wanted entire apartments and homes, not just a corner of a shared space. The founders listened and created a disruptive new model of short-term home-sharing rental. What started as humble spare bedrooms quickly grew into a revolution. Airbnb soon began offering unique private homes with all the comforts of cozy Italian villas, beach bungalows, and Manhattan lofts, setting itself apart from traditional hotels. At these homes, customers could cook real meals and live freely, all for an affordable price. By the time global economic turmoil hit in 2010, Airbnb had become a $25 million company. However, the question remained, could Airbnb sustain its success long-term? As Airbnb grew rapidly, more hosts joined the platform hoping to earn some extra income. However, with time, the dynamics began to change. Many hosts realized that they could charge much higher nightly rates than before, given that Airbnb only charges 17%. Nothing was stopping the hosts from cutting a bigger pie for themselves. And that's exactly what they did. In hot tourist cities like New York, London, and LA, the $100 bookings that were the norm in 2010 slowly crept up to $250 and then $300 or more by 2015. Currently, due to high demand, hosts can steadily increase apartment prices to $500 or more without service fees. Big hotel brands like Marriott and Hilton became worried about the growing popularity of Airbnb. To compete in the market, they initiated large-scale renovation projects, completely renovating their properties and creating spacious suites with hardwood floors, full kitchens, and artfully arranged living areas. They didn't stop there, as they also introduced hotel loyalty programs that provided increased amenities that were previously only available with premium room rates. Customers on a budget could now enjoy breakfast included, or 24-7 room service, which further reduced the competition. The recent changes have significantly reduced the gap between hotels and Airbnb, and as a result, Private rentals are now priced similarly to nearby hotel rooms. For instance, a studio apartment in a Miami neighborhood may be listed for $275 on Airbnb, while a Hilton Garden in two blocks away offers newly renovated suites with the same amenities for just $279, including breakfast. This has made customers realize that there is barely any savings in dealing with the hassle of an Airbnb rental. Soon, customers began to realize that Airbnb's costs were being inflated by numerous extra fees. Cleaning charges, sometimes exceeding $100, came as a surprise to many as they expected these to be included in the cost of renting a whole home. This was frustrating for travelers, as service fees on Airbnb also hindered their ability to plan their budgets. These fees, which could sometimes go as high as 15% of the nightly rate, significantly reduced the savings that had initially attracted customers. To make matters worse, new occupancy and tourism taxes pushed up the final bill for a $150 Airbnb listing by an extra $50, thus erasing the value gap that was once the hallmark of the platform. Airbnb was no longer a budget-friendly option, as it now demanded luxury prices without offering luxury perks like room service or breakfasts. Ratings data showed customers switching back to familiar hotel brands, indicating that Airbnb's main selling point, its affordability, was no longer viable. As the home-sharing market expands, 
many still face unreliable experiences that chip away at Airbnb's warm reputation, some power-hungry hosts inflict strict and unrealistic protocols around cleaning that border on the absurd. I mean, so many travelers are being charged hundreds of dollars in cleaning fees, despite taking out their own trash and doing dishes during a week-long stay. It's crazy, to say the least. Guests are taking a gamble with every new booking, as there is no certainty of what they will get. Moldy bathrooms, threadbare furnishings, and basic amenities that are lacking, such as half-stocked kitchens and absent toiletries, have led to complaints from customers. Some have even arrived to find that their two-bedroom listing was actually a converted shed. This inconsistency in customer satisfaction compared to the well-oiled operations of hotels has caused a shift in customer loyalty. Overnight, the rules of the game had changed, leaving customers feeling baffled. Airbnb, once a giant in the industry, seems to have lost the trust and loyalty of its customers. The unique localized experiences that the company was founded on are no longer appealing to the public. While it is still dominating the competition overseas, Airbnb is losing ground in the US markets, and it's no secret that the company spends billions of dollars on marketing to improve its brand image. But the question is, will the people buy into it this time or have they moved on to traditional hotels? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. One thing is for sure, the company needs to rework its customer satisfaction and monetization models if it wants to make a comeback, if at all. And that's it for today's video. If you liked it, please show your support by hitting the like button and sharing your thoughts in the comments section below. Your support enables us to reach a wider audience with our content. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to watch our other videos right here.